Welcome back, my duelist friends. Casual Duelist here. It is finally Saturday, so happy Saturday. Welcome to the weekend. Hopefully your entire week was good. Um, today's challenge video was for me to make a deck where we can go ahead and we can use the Dark Magician Girl and probably take the deck to locals. So, that said, I've done what I think can be done. And like usual, we are going to start with our skill card. So, it is a Yugi skill card. It is one that you flip over when you activate. And guys, it's one of my new favorites. It's ultimate wizardry, okay? So for the most part, we are sticking away from spell counters. But we are using like three cards that really benefit from it. And there's no drawback um, to you guys using a different skill. It's just this one's very readily available right now. And uh, I think it's good. So... When you activate this, place a spell counter on each face of spellcaster that you control that can contain a spell counter. And then additionally, once per turn during the main phase, you can place one spell counter on a face of spellcaster that you control that you can place a spell counter onto. So again, if you guys watched the Break or Breaks It video, you guys know what I'm talking about when I say that this is like one of my favorite skill cards. That said, you're going to notice some of the lineup as being familiar, but let's get into the deck. So, first and foremost, we've got our mascot, who's going to be doing some damage. Two copies, Dark Magician Girl. Now, technically, we could limit this down to one. Uh, we could change the other one to something else. If you guys want to be a little more competitive, it's fine. Doesn't matter that much. But the goal was to use Dark Magician Girl. So, I wanted to make sure that there were two. This way, we were seeing her enough. But we have other methods of playing her. So, again, one is still fine. Uh, next up, we're going to tap into our limits. We are going to use two copies of Breaker. Now, Breaker is the man, as it were. And with this skill card, can clear the entire back row by himself. Uh, what happens is when he's normal summon, he gets a spell counter. Boom, spell counter. He can only hold one, so I guess uh, one. And then uh, while he holds it, he gains 300 points of attack. Um, additionally, we can take the spell counter off, take it off. And we can go ahead and destroy one spell trap card on the field. Now, with, through the use of Ultimate Wizardry, we could do that once. We can activate it. He counts as one of all the monsters that can hold him. He gets it. He can use it. Then we can use the once per turn effect and give it back to him. And he can continue destroying stuff, or he can maintain the power bonus. That is up to you as the player. So, two Breakers, two Dark Magician Girl. The next next best card we have is Chao Sai, the, the Ghost Stopper. So, this guy is actually pretty cool. He is a four-star Dark Spellcaster. Neither player can activate the effects of spell traps in the graveyard. This does stop us, ourselves, from using Lost Winds, uh, or at least reusing them. Um, if you do happen to destroy an opponent's Waking the Dragon, um, Chao Se is still going to be there on your side to help you continue pushing through the enemy forces. So, again, if everybody's doing the same thing I do, well, this is going to make it so that they, they can't. Um... Do, 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 do. If this is sent from the field to the graveyard, you may target a spell trap in the graveyard of your opponent and banish that card. So again, he really does try to stop all the spell traps from being in the graveyard, from doing any of their jobs that they're supposed to be doing. Plus, he's a wonderful 1900, uh, so he fits well. Uh, last up, two copies Kaiku, the Ghost Destroyer. I love this card. Four star 1800. Uh, when inflicts bad damage to the opponent, target up to two monsters in their graveyard, banish them. Additionally, the opponent cannot banish cards in either graveyard. Um, and this is good, too, because this stops the opponent from messing with our stuff. Um, but this is a great lineup, and we take advantage of this with the limited to two Allure of Darkness. Uh, since all, what was this, nine monsters? Three, two, five, seven, nine. Yeah, that's nine monsters. Uh, since all nine of those monsters are dark attributes, two Allures of Darkness make it very easy for us to go ahead and get the draw two. Which, again, in Speed Duel is crazy. That's 10% of your deck. Um, our third of the three ups. I am carrying a single copy Book of Moon. Book of Moon just puts in enough work to where I just always want it. Um, and it is what it is. Uh, additionally, we're going to be running two Night Beams. And we're going to be using the Night Beams because sometimes you want to eradicate the back row before you start boarding monsters. And this will mean that the cards cannot be uh, responsive. And this will allow Breaker to contain or maintain his uh, spell counters over the course of the duel, keeping the power ceiling closer to the 19-2000 ranks. 
Uh, last spell we have got in the main deck is Offerings to the Doomed. It is our one of. Uh, yes, it will cost us a draw phase, but again, we have two copies of Allure to offset this. Um, it's just good stuff, great stuff. It's quick play. It's going to help us maintain our Dark Magician Girl while she's on the field. Uh, going into our traps, we're going to use two copies of Lost Wind because it's pretty standard for me. Uh, anytime the opponent starts special summoning monsters, we can take away half their attack and their effects. And additionally, as long as Chow Sai is not on the field, um, we will be able to bring this card back from the discard pile if our opponent special summons out of the extra deck. Uh, and again, extra deck monsters will always be special summons, so then you just on the next turn use the Lost Wind on that. And then last but not least, this is the super secret, not so secret method of how to get the Dark Magician Girl to the field as fast as possible. We are going to maximize three Magician Circle. So the way this trap works is whenever a Spellcaster monster declares an attack, again, we've stacked our deck full of them. Um, whenever that happens, each player special summons, it forces it, uh, a Spellcaster monster with 2,000 or less attack directly from the deck in attack mode. This will allow us to get our Dark Magician Girl regardless of who's attacking. Um, and again, if your opponent's playing something where they got like some weenie magicians, maybe they've got Apprentice or like Old Vindictive or even Magician of Faith, which I should have pulled those two out. Um, if that's their only option, man, that's on the field in attack mode. Uh, that's uh, Magician of Faith, if I'm right, is 300 attack. Uh, Apprentice Magician is 400. And I want to say Old Vindictive was something like 450. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but it, it feels right. Um, at which point, literally every monster in your deck beats it. Uh, and again, if you've got a Kaiku out, you could start banishing stuff. This way they can't recycle it. Um, not that there's a whole lot of recycling, but they do have that new Kaiba Corp skill uh, with Kaiba. Let me see that. That's still over here. The Kaiba Corp Research, and this card does allow a player to place a card from the graveyard back in the deck, so long as a monster, or was it a monster? No, just any card from the hand takes its place, and then it does allow them to draw two cards on the next turn. So again, can be crazy, um, but it is what it is. Um, this is the main deck list. Go ahead, pause, take some notes, uh, screen cap, screenshot us. Uh, whatever you guys need to do to get this list. And then I'll be back in just a couple of seconds with the rest of it. So just a moment. And we're back with the extra deck. And like you guys should have guessed, it is my favorite six. Because again, they come in the most handy. Uh, most often throughout the course of a game. And then again, our side deck. So the side deck is where the flavor is. Uh, this is what it may or make or break your day to locals. Um, so we are going to sub in a copy of Dahlgren. Because again, Kaiju equals wins. Uh, Kaiju is good. Uh, we do have a Magical Marionette. Sometimes you guys don't want to play the Double D-Mage Girl. And if you need to toss out DMG, you could toss Eminem in there. Um, much like the Rapper, he's going to get pretty mean on the opponent's cards. Uh, every spell counter he does hold... Gives him 200 points. He is not a capped card. Um, every time a spell card is activated and resolves, he's given a counter immediately afterward through his own effect. And on your turn, you may remove uh, two spell counters at a time to destroy a monster card on the field. Uh, so again, when you deal with the ultimate wizardry skill, you're going to figure there's one. There's two if you designate him specifically with the second one. That's already a destruction, and the first destruction is free. And then you've got to remember that when dealing with the Magician's Circle, he is a Spellcaster. He is 2,000, so he fits the bill for a quick special summon. Anything that your opponent plays for spells during their own turn will, of course, give him additional counters, buffing him on the in-between. Um, there's a lot of reasons why you should play this card. Uh, next up, since you are in Locals, everything should be more standardized it's not like you're getting at my casual tables with me and my friends so the mind crush as a pair may work better for you if you only like a single mind crush and there's like another trap like widespread ruin or something that you like feel free to sub it um, obviously and then same thing with waking the dragon you you want to play this sometimes you'll sub out the chow size in order to make sure that the chow Sai cards are not actively blocking the effect um it is a fairly simple go for. 
Uh, so I will like trade these out for two of them. Uh, I'll keep the uh, the third one in there. Uh, and then of course, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But this this should be a good uh, entry level build. Um, the only thing that's really going to kill you on costs here is going to be things like maybe the TIs restricted to blue eyes. I think everything else has been printed within um, maybe not offerings to the doomed. Offerings to Doom, I want to say, was in the same structure deck as now. Now there was a different structure deck. Um, that was the Bukhura and Merrick one. So unless they got a reprint, and I'm just spacing on it right now. Um, it's like three cards that aren't released in the box sets. Um, but this is the deck. I do hope that you guys all enjoy this. Uh, test it out. Let me know how it plays for you guys. Uh, please support the channel, as always. Uh, easiest ways to do that, you guys are already doing one of them. You guys are watching my videos. Uh, the next best thing that you guys could do to help the algorithm so everybody else can find them and watch them is like and comment. Subscribe, of course, if we've earned it. And uh, just enjoy the rest of today, okay? Uh, I do have a Speed Duel Spotlight picked out for you guys for tomorrow. We got another off-brand uh, non-Yu-Gi-Oh! build for Monday. Um, plenty of stuff planned out for next week. Hopefully you guys will uh, keep checking back, keep uh, enjoying, okay? So until next time, you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you later.